Good afternoon. I'm here to show you a calculation for the first experiment where we practice dilution skills. So dilution means I'm taking something and adding water. Okay. So I have a made up example. You're going to do different numbers and different things, but here's uh, how you can calculate the concentration of all your solutions. And we're going to need this information in order to do the experiment. So First off, I like to I like to write down what I know about the problem first. So I know that there's 1.234 grams of my dye, and I also know that there's 2.00 liters. Okay, uh, and then that's going to be the first solution. My second solution. So there's kind of two problems in this. The second one is going to use this mixture, uh, I'm gonna measure one milliliter of it, three soup pigs. And, oh no, sorry, one milliliter of water. I'm gonna use nine milliliters of my solution. So I like to label um, not just with the unit and the value, but also the, the identity. So I know what uh, each number applies to. Um, so I'm just gonna call this solution one. And that would be up here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is calculate the actual concentration of solution one. So I'm gonna start with that. First off, we have um, 1.234 grams of dye into two liters of total solution. So you can also write this as grams per two liters. Now, if I were a computer, that would get typed sideways. It would be like, right? But we need to be able to understand that the typing version of a fraction really means that I have a numerator and I have a denominator. That's going to help you a whole lot if you write your fraction um, the proper way instead of sideways. Because then I can see I need to convert the grams into the unit we're looking for for mass, which is micrograms. And then I need to convert the liters to milliliters. You can do this as all one big long calculation, or you could take just the mass and convert it to micrograms first, then the liters, and then put them together at the end. It doesn't matter to me which way you choose. Okay, so, um, I'm going to just do the mass first. It doesn't matter, though. Multiplication can be done in any order. But I want to get rid of grams. So that's going to become a denominator in my first conversion factor. It is expected that you remember that there's 1 million micro, in this case, grams, micrograms, for every 1 gram. So that's a conversion factor we need to have under our belt. It's one of the five uh, metric system prefixes we're supposed to do. Okay, so if I do that, that's gonna cancel the grams, that's a big marker, and give us micrograms on the top. Now the two liters is still there, so what I wanna do is get rid of liters and turn it into milliliters. So I know that there's one liter, and I chose to put the liter on top because that is opposite of uh, the starting information that I have. So two liters will cancel with one liter, and I know that there is a thousand milliliters. So remember from dimensional analysis, this is called a conversion factor. It's a true fact that relates the two units I'm trying to think about. Um, it has nothing to do with our data. So I'm not putting two liters here, okay? I'm putting just the conversion factor, just the relationship from the definition of the metric system. And so altogether, if I, if I do this math, basically um, it's multiplying by a thousand and dividing by two, okay? Okay, I got my calculator. So I multiply 1.234 times a million and then divide that answer by two and then divide that answer by a thousand and we get 617 micrograms 
per milliliter of solution. That's our concentration for solution one. So often we use the symbol C for any concentration unit. And the one stands for solution one. And so 617. And sig figs wise, I probably need to add uh, one more digit because I had four. No, I don't because I have three here. Oops. Okay. Always worth checking. So just 617 is good here because we only had three from our volume. It's micrograms per milliliter now. Okay, so that's the first answer we need. The next answer we're going to need is for every dilution we do in the experiment. So I've chosen an example here where I'm going to use nine milliliters of solution one and one milliliter of water. Um, so the formula comes from chapter 8.2, which you should read before you do the Beer's Law experiment because 8.2 tells all about how we can use light to measure things. Um, but our C1 comes from the stock solution. So in this case, that'll be 617 micrograms per milliliter. Milliliter, there we go. Um, the volume of the stock is what is going to be V1. So here, our V1. All of that material I measure. All of means multiply. I know they go together. C2 is the thing I need to figure out. I'm trying to figure out the concentration after my dilution. B2 is the total volume. Okay, so in this example, it's going to be um, your nine milliliters of stock that you put in there plus your one milliliter. So all together, my V2, my total volume at the end is 10 milliliters. So often when we do spectrophotometry experiments using Beer's Law, we're, we're going to keep the volume the same throughout the entire thing. So that makes the calculation a little bit easier because the only thing that changes is volume one, how much stock I'm putting in there. In this example, my answer comes out on the calculator to 555.3. My unit is the same. I haven't changed any units this time. Um, and so, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm assuming you know how to solve this equation. I multiplied 617 times 9, and then that answer gets divided by 10. That's how I did it. Um, but anyway, so C2 is our diluted concentration. Um, since our initial concentration of our stock only has three figures, I can't actually keep that three. So what I would record and what I would use in the experiment with the correct number of significant digits is 555 micrograms per milliliter. Okay, so you're gonna do something similar for your pre-lab questions. That way you are ready to go when lab time comes and you know all of the concentrations for all of your solutions.